So good morning and welcome to today's daily service on St Ebbs. This week we've been thinking about the picture of the Christian life as a fight from Ephesians 6. And today our verse is Ephesians 6 verse 14 which reads as follows. Stand firm then with the breastplate of righteousness in place. The Narnia Chronicles by C.S. Lewis are a brilliant portrait of all sorts of spiritual truths and one of the great things they do is by picturing a world beyond a wardrobe, which is the real world, they invite us to enter the spiritual realm, as it were, where all sorts of forces operate. We've already thought about those, haven't we? There are the rulers, the authorities, the powers of this dark world, spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And just as Satan took the guise of a snake in Eden, so here he uses a substitute, subterfuge of human beings. Paul calls it flesh and blood. There are two things that we're going to see from this little verse. Firstly, stand and fight. We need to be ready for Satan and all his minions. And so our verse begins, stand firm then. But in what way? Well, the answer is with the right armour for the battle. Yesterday we thought about the belt of truth. Today we're thinking about the breastplate of righteousness. As a young, keen, enthusiastic 17-year-old Christian, I had a big A3 poster of a glorious Roman soldier up on my bedroom wall with Bible verses attached to different pieces of the armour. It was impressive, if slightly misplaced, because Paul doesn't have so much in mind here a Roman soldier as a passage from Isaiah. We're going to read part of that now from Isaiah 59. So justice is far from us and righteousness does not reach us. We look for light, but all is darkness. For brightness, but we walk in deep shadows. Like the blind, we grope along the wall, feeding our way like people without eyes. At midday, we stumble as if it were twilight. Among the strong, we are like the dead. We all growl like bears. We moan mournfully like doves. We look for justice, but find none. For deliverance, but it is far away. For our offences are many in your sight, and our sins testify against us. Our offences are ever with us, and we acknowledge our iniquities, rebellion and treachery against the Lord, turning our backs on our God, inciting revolt and oppression, uttering lies our hearts have conceived. So justice is driven back, and righteousness stands at a distance. Truth has stumbled in the streets. Honesty cannot enter. Truth is nowhere to be found, and whoever shuns evil becomes a prey. The Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice. He saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So his own arm achieved salvation for him, and his own righteousness sustained him. He put on righteousness as his breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance and wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak. Righteousness has at its heart the idea of living rightly in God's world according to his rules. But here in chapter 59 of Isaiah, we've seen that's not the case at all. There's a desperation, a recognition that righteousness is the last thing that could be used to describe the people of God. They are really in deep need. But then God acts. Look again at verse 17. He put on righteousness as his breastplate. So do you see what happens? God puts on armour and steps forward in our place. It's quite strange if you stop and think about it because God is by nature righteous. So what does it mean for him to put on righteousness? Well, it's a clear picture of rescue. It's a clear picture of God acting, moving in to save his people whom he is completely committed to. And of course that is seen supremely in the work of the Lord Jesus on the cross. He, the perfectly righteous one, dies in our place. We, the most unrighteous people who have ever lived. And then here's the incredible exchange or swap. We receive his righteousness in the place of him taking our unrighteousness. That's the wonderful thing. And so 
The breastplate of righteousness is something that God gives us. It is Jesus' righteousness, and that is the thing that protects us in the battle. So, stand and fight. Then secondly, how to stand and fight. Standing still tells us something pretty important, that defence, as well as offence, is crucial in the battle. Here, we're thinking of a defensive piece of armour that will protect us in the fight. We will not collapse in the fight because the belt of truth holds everything together. But here, when Satan launches his darts, as it were, or his thrusts viciously against us, we are enabled to stand firm and not retreat. It's not for nothing, is it, that the word Satan or the devil actually means accuser. If you're anything like me, I'm sure you can think of many times that you regret. Times when you wish you'd not said or thought that or done that. Or times when you wish you had said or had thought or had done that. And at such times, when your heart is low and you're discouraged, you can feel like throwing the towel in, like giving up, but it's not worth it, that you're not good enough. And Satan is not slow to rub our noses in the dirt, is he? He comes along and does that, attacks us and accuses us. And it's at that moment that actually we're more likely to give in to sin because we think there's no point in fighting. Martin Luther has a tremendous, as it were, imaginary conversation that he has with, de with the devil when he comes and tempts him. Listen to what he says. When you say I am a sinner, Satan, you give me armour and weapons against myself, so that with your own sword I may cut your throat and tread you under my feet. For Christ died for sinners. As often as you tell me that I am a sinner then, you remind me of Christ my Redeemer, on whose shoulders, and not on mine, lie all my sins. When you say I am a sinner, you do not terrify, but comfort me immeasurably. Don't you just love that? Isn't it just so encouraging? That's how the breastplate of righteousness works. Or, if you want the more familiar words of a hymn, when Satan tempts me to despair, and tells me of the guilt within, up would I look, and see him there, who made an end of all my sin. We need to remember that our sins are grievous. Anything less than that cheapens the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet, we also need to remember that it is his righteousness that secures our standing before God. He is the one that will ultimately protect us, as it were, from the accusations of Satan, and indeed on that last great day of judgment when we stand before our Heavenly Father. We will be clear because of what Christ has done. You see, at the heart of Satan's lying deceits is the age-old insinuation that God is somehow not good and is most definitely not for us. But the breastplate of righteousness assures us that that is not true. That is a lie. God is very much for us, and it is his gift to us to keep us going. So let's be encouraged as we begin to enter a new day and carry on throughout the week to remember that we hide behind and are protected by the wonderful righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ, pictured here by this breastplate. We're now going to pray. We begin by asking for help to rest in God as we contemplate the battle. Join me as I pray. O God of peace, who has taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved, in quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray you, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let's pray about the battle that we're called to fight. O oh Lord, I thank you that the matter of the battle between myself and Satan has never been uncertain and will end in victory. Calvary broke Satan's head, and so I fight a defeated enemy, who with all his subtlety and strength has already been overcome. So when I feel Satan at my heel, help me to remember the one whose heel was bruised, but on the cross broke the devil's head. I extol Jesus, the mighty conqueror. 
Heal me of any wounds received in my battle. If I have become corrupted, if my faith has been damaged, if my hope is dimmed, if my hope is less passionate, if some creature comfort occupies my heart, if my soul is sinking in the ongoing struggle, please draw near to this weary warrior and refresh me, that I may rise again to wage war once more, and never stop until I see the Lord Jesus face to face. I ask this in the all-conquering name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Finally, we can enjoy a hymn together. Let's listen to this new song which celebrates the victory of Christ. It's called Hallelujah. Let's say these words together as we finish. Now to him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Saviour be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>